Uh, thank you. Our next uh, discussion will be 30-day outcomes of laparoscopic versus open appendectomy in elderly patients using ACS NISQIP database uh, from Dr. presented by Dr. Mazuz from the University of Southern California. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I wanted to thank Sages, uh, Dr. Baisky and Dr. Melvin for um, giving us the, pr the privilege to present our day, uh, this study here at Sages. So the title is 30-day outcomes of laparoscopic versus open appendectomy in the elderly using the ACS NIST group data. I have nothing to disclose. This is the ACS uh, disclosure. So laparoscopic appendectomy is becoming the procedure of choice for management of appendicitis um, due to a lower rate of surgical site infection, lower length of stay, hospital stay, and faster return to normal life. The life expectancy in the United States over the last few years has increased, and many has projected that there will be an exp um, increased rate of appendicitis in the elderly. The pu current published articles are limited and has um, limitations. However, there was a recent publication from NISCOP data uh, comparing laparoscopic and open appendectomy in the elderly, but they have a different statistical methodology and they did not do a, any subgroup analysis. We used the databases for 2005 to 2009 from the American College of Surgeons National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. Our goals uh, objectives was to compare minor morbidity, senior, s serious morbidity, mortality, surgical site infection, length of stay and operative time between laparoscopic and open groups in this group of age. And we also did a subgroup analysis in uncomplicated and complicated appendicitis and low and high AC scores. Using the CPT codes and ICD-9, our inclusion criteria was patients with age of 65 or older who had single CPT code for an open or laparoscopic appendectomy and had a discharge ICD-9 diagnosis of appendicitis. We did our statistical analysis in an aggregate cohort which included all patients, 3,674 patients, out of which 72% underwent a laparoscopic appendectomy. The data in the NIST group is not randomized to a treatment uh, plan, and that can introduce a selection bias in the data which can affect the outcomes. So we decided to match every patient in the open group with lab one patient in the laparoscopic group using propensity score matching. Propensity score matching is the probability of having a treatment, in this case open appendectomy, given the preoperative risk factors. So then we matched each patient in the open group with laparoscopic group who has the closest propensity score. In order to assess the quality of matching, we used standardized bias, which basically shows how different these risk factors are. As you can see, 10 out of our 24 preoperative risk factors that we could calculate as standardized bias were more than 6%, but after matching, all of them were less than 6%. Also, we compared the preoperative risk factors, and as you can see, 12 out of 27 preoperative and intraoperative risk factors were significantly different in the aggregate cohort, but after matching, none of them were different. Our patients uh, in the aggregate cohort had a mean age of 74 years in the open group and 73 years in the laparoscopic group. Although statistically significant, it was not a clinical significant, but in the matched cohort, they were the same. The BMI was 28, gender distribution was almost one to one, and most patients were white, and there were no differences between these in any of the groups. The patients in the open group, in the aggregate cohort, in addition to be a little bit older, they tend to smoke more. They had higher rate of dyspnea, pulmonary disease, preoperative wound infection, renal failure, bleeding disorder, peripheral vascular disease, preoperative sepsis, emergency surgery, and higher rate of dirty or contaminated wounds. In the matched cohort, none of these were significant. 
From our data, we saw that in the aggregate cohort, patients in the open group experienced a 9.3% minor morbidity versus laparoscopic, which was 45 and this was significant. They also had a higher rate of overall morbidity and a higher rate of mortality. But in the matched group, the minor morbidity and overall morbidity were still significant, but mortality was not significant anymore, which shows that when patients are matched based on their preoperative risk factors, laparoscopic surgery does not have a benefit over open. As far as surgical site infections, patients in the laparoscopic group had a less risk of superficial surgical site infection, less risk of deep incisional, and wound disruption. However, when patients are matched, the superficial surgical site infection was less, but the deep incisional was not. And interestingly, patients in laparoscopic group had a higher rate of organ space infection, 2.9 versus 1.3 after they were matched. The patients in the open group in aggregate cohort had unplanned intubation and deep vein, thrombos deep vein thrombosis more often, but in the match group, there were no differences in any other complications between the two groups. In the subgroup analysis, in the uncomplicated appendicitis, we saw a less minor morbidity in the laparoscopic group, less overall morbidity, less superficial and deep incisional, and again, a higher rate of organ space in the laparoscopic group. However, in the matched group, only this organ space infection in the laparoscopic group was more statistically significant and none of them stayed significant, the other ones. In the complicated appendicitis, the minor morbidity and superficial SSI was higher in the open group in the aggregate cohort. In the matched cohort, superficial SSI was still high, but again, organ space infection was higher in the laparoscopic group. We also did a subgroup analysis in patients with high ASA scores. We noticed the lower minor morbidity, overall morbidity, mortality, superficial site infection, and deep incision in the aggregate cohort. And still in the matched cohort, they have less minor morbidity, overall morbidity, and superficial surgical site infection. In the Almost all groups, patients in laparoscopic group had a one day shorter length of stay and no difference in the operative time. In summary, laparoscopic versus open appendectomy in the elderly patients within the Nesquip hospitals had less minor morbidity, less overall morbidity, lower rate of superficial surgical site infection and shorter length of stay. However, laparoscopic surgery was associated with a higher rate of organ space SSI. Thank you. We'll take uh, questions uh, from the uh, audience, either from the podium or electronically uh, communicated. Uh, there are several uh, questions. In uh, this elderly patient population, it's not uncommon for other diagnoses to be identified at the time of surgery. Was that figured or factored into your uh, uh, cohort analysis? Yes, they were all excluded. We selected only patients who had a single diagnosis of appendicitis. So all those patients uh, were, were excluded. Despite your, your methodology for uh, cohort comparison, there is still the possibility of selection bias uh, in two major ways. One is the individual surgeons who perform the procedures may prefer to do open surgery and have different pathways. The second is the site of the hospital. Uh, how was that uh, anal analyzed in your data? We didn't have a control on that, unfortunately, based on this data, so that's one of the limitations of this study. Do you have uh, any indication from the, the type of hospital, whether it was rural hospital, large hospitals, or small hospitals? Not unfortunately. Was, uh, any uh, difference, or did you do that analysis? Not unfortunately, we don't have that information. And then lastly, it would appear from your data that uh, surgical site infection seems significantly lower in, uh, in uh, patients who undergo the laparoscopic cohort. Is it therefore your recommendation that laparoscopy is superior? Uh, to uh, open surgery in the sense of uh, uh, site infection? You have to keep in mind that the organ space is higher in laparoscopic, but other than that, it was a higher, lower, significantly lower rate of superficial site infection. So that's something that you have to consider when you're deciding between laparoscopic and open surgery. Uh, one more question from the audience. Did you do a cost analysis, and is that possible to do uh, using your data set? Not unfortunately, we don't have that data in scope data. Thank you for your time.